Hey, this is Scott, and today I'm going to take a look at the Reach Plus 2, or CineKit 2, tripod and fluid head from Sessin. So Sessin has a range of different tripods in its Reach Plus series, with different capacities and different sizes, and you can get them either by themselves or in a cine kit like I did with this, which comes with both the ground level spreader and also the mid-level spreader, and a couple other accessories like a really nice padded bag and rubber feet for use together with that mid-level spreader. The legs are simple, two-stage carbon fiber legs with a 75mm bowl and flip style locks that are easy to grab, open, and close. You can also get aluminum legs if you buy the tripod without the kit. You have the typical spikes under the rubber feet of the ground spreader, which was already attached in this cine kit, and the mid-level spreader clips on incredibly easily. The legs are very sturdy with no twisting or anything, even without the mid-level spreader. There are also some separate rubber feet if you want to use the mid-level spreader indoors, but for the life of me, I could not get these on. The rubber on here that you stretch over the little notch on the foot needs to be stretched quite a bit to fit, but it's extremely tight and I tried until I literally ripped the skin off my fingers, but I could not get them on. The ground level spreader was already attached when I got it, and that is much easier to attach and detach in the same way, maybe because it's already stretched out a bit. Also, the plastic on the top of these legs does feel a little bit unfinished to me, especially the underside where it's a bit rough. It makes it fairly uncomfortable to lift or grab under there, especially with a heavy camera on top. This will smooth out over time though, and the other parts on here are all smoothly finished. The Reach Plus 2 fluid head has a counterbalance range from 0 to 9.6 kilograms or 21 pounds, which is a very generous range, and that counterbalance can be set in 8 steps from 0 to 7. Depending on the weight of your ring, you may or may not be able to find exactly the perfect amount of counterbalance without adding in some drag, but having 8 steps is a fairly high level of control compared to some others in this price range, and you can also go all the way down to 0, which is rare as well. You also get 5 levels of drag on both the tilt and pan axes, plus absolute 0, which is really quite a good range again for this price. As long as you get your rig balanced well, there doesn't seem to be any significant problems with backlash. Although there is a claimed minus 75 to plus 90 degree tilt range, I found that the lower 10 to 20% of that is a bit springy compared to the rest. This tripod does not use a sliding plate, but a pop-in quick release plate that I really like quite a lot. My one small complaint is that especially with the Canon C200, the alignment of this plate is a little bit restricted because the video pin and 3 8 inch screw at the back are both stationary, not sliding. That means I only have one choice of position on the body of the camera, but it's not a huge problem for the most part. The plate is held in place by a lever and sliding piece at the back. There's a safety lock that you can pull down to slide the lever over and pop the plate out. Putting it back in is just as simple as long as that lever is left open, and it automatically locks in place without having to screw or tighten anything down. To find the balance for your whole rig on here, you release the lever in the front of the head and slide the entire top plate back and forth, not your camera. Once you find your balance, just lock that lever down, and no matter how many times you take your camera on and off, you will never have to rebalance it unless something changes like a lens or an additional accessory. This makes it really quick to go between tripod and handheld shots, and I really love it. Even for things as simple as getting a close-up of a white balance card after you've already framed up your shot. The sliding plate itself does have numbers on the side if you want to remember the alignment for a couple of different rigs or setups that you're switching back and forth between. It slides very smoothly and minute adjustments are easy. I really like this design. Anyway, you get a mostly metal build here in the head, with things like the levers being plastic but feeling solid enough, especially compared to other heads in and even above this price range. The pan bar actually has a little extra layer of rosette on it, not identical but similar to the Miller Compass X series, and it seems like it could be replaced if it gets worn out over time. The arm is fairly long but it's not telescoping unfortunately, so it's kind of annoying in tight places. They do have another telescopic pan bar available though, so if you want that, I'd contact them before buying and see if it could be swapped out. The head itself levels out in pretty much the same way as all fluid heads by loosening it underneath and using the built-in bubble level, which is unfortunately not illuminated in this case. In the Cine Kit 2, or even just the Reach Plus 2 kit, this all comes in a very nice quality case for transport, and the full Cine Kit comes in at just over $1,200. So overall, there are very, very few cons here, and most of them are very picky anyway. 
There's the very good, but not 100% perfect counterbalance system here, but honestly, it's pretty much on par with all of the other tripod heads in this price range, but this has much, much finer tuned control over that counterbalance and also has a higher payload than most of those other heads, again, in this price range. Again, there's that slightly rough plastic on the legs that I talked about, but again, that will smooth out over time and already has for me over these few weeks that I've been using this. The screws in the tripod plate have been a little bit annoying, but again, that's for me specifically with the C200 and it's not a huge problem. I can still definitely use it. I just would like a little bit more flexibility there. Other than that, it's just small little things here and there, like the non-illuminated bubble level and the non-telescoping arm. But again, you can also get a telescoping arm for this, so that's not really a huge issue either. So overall, you're getting quite an amazing tripod here for your money. No, I don't think you're going to get the same performance as a top-level Sockler or O'Connor tripod, obviously, but for the money, you really can't beat this. I think that Manfrotto is probably more in the range of competition with this tripod based on the price and stuff like that. But again, this does have a very high level of fine-tuned control with that counterbalance system, a very high payload, and also just for me personally, after reviewing one of their tripods in the past, I've since been kind of turned off to Manfrotto as a brand, mostly due to their customer service and my experiences with that. Um, but just I really don't personally want to buy any more Manfrotto tripods after that. Anyway, if you are working with a slightly more restricted budget and you do want more power or more control and a very good performance, very good build quality, I would say this is really one of the best that you could get. Yes, you could go with another more well-known brand, of course, but in this price range, you're definitely going to be limited with the you know counterbalance maximum capacity or just the amount of control you have over it, how many steps there are, for example. Um, there's going to be some limitation if you go with one of the more well-known brands compared to this. You could also go with something like Manfrotto that may be a little bit more attractive features-wise for this same price, but you're probably not going to get the same quality as this in terms of the performance. I found that this Cessid tripod really gives kind of the best of all of that, and while it may not be perfect, you're really, really getting a very solid performance here. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below and I will get back to you. If you liked this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.